even a hundred old. <clears throat> if he says it in, in, in verse 9, he says, now if you have ears, listen to this. Now here is the explanation of the story I told you about the farmer planting seed. He told him, he said, now um, the hard path where some of the seeds fell represent the heart of a person who hears the good news about the kingdom and doesn't understand it. And then Satan comes along and snatches away the seeds from his heart. The shallow rocky soil represents the heart of a man who hears the message and receives it with joy. <clears throat> But he said it, it doesn't last long. He said, but he has much depth. But he doesn't have much depth in his life. And the seed doesn't root very deeply. And after a while, when trouble comes, persecution begins. Uh, <clears throat> because because of his trouble, when, when trouble comes or when persecution begins, <laughs> his excitement and he just kind of back out and then he said the ground covered with thistles represent a man who hears the message but the cares of the world he just can't quite turn it loose yet he just can't do that but the cares of this life and his longing for money he said he choke out God's word and he does less and mess with God. Then he talks about that last one. He said, the good ground, uh, uh, <clears throat> he talks about the one that fell on the good ground. He said, the good ground represents the heart of a man who listens to the message and understands it and goes out and brings 30, 60, or even 100 others in the kingdom. Now, when we look at some of the things in this lesson, said so he taught the crowd in parables, and of course, in the dictionary says that according to according to the Bible dictionary, it says a parable is a short, simple story created to communicate a spiritual truth or a religious principle. And let's let's look at a few other things. First, the, the, the seed. You know, we read that that first group of seed fell on the path and out in the open, and the hungry birds came and had a feast. This means that when anyone hears the word of word of the kingdom, and you do not understand it. You know, you, you are, you're apt to be picked off by anybody. Satan comes along and pick you off and snatches out what little bit you heard. You did not understand what you had heard, but he comes along and take that little bit from you. And, and then he talks about the seed that was sown on rocky ground. He said that that's kind of as a man who he hears the word at first and is filled with joy. His life may, even though his life might be in a rocky place, but the sprouting of the sea calls for celebration. This man, he has a false sense of security because his situation is flimsy and weak. You know, so many times you see people come and, you know, and they, they join the church. They're excited. They're on fire. They are, you know, I mean, that's that wild moment. That's their aha moment. And then sometimes they don't even come back for the uh, baptism or the right hand of fellowship. You don't see them anymore sometime until they die. They had this moment of joy and then it's gone. I guess they didn't have a good support system or somebody didn't follow up with them. Well, because they were so overjoyed, so full of joy, you felt like they kind of had it going on. And it says when trouble comes, that's when they fall apart. <clears throat> and he says that um, 
He talks about the seed that uh, was sown and the uh, <clears throat> the other seed that was sown um, um, came up among thorns and thistles. He said, he has, he has no root. He said, now, th- this man, <clears throat> this man, when he come along with thorns and thistles, so he said, now, this is this. But the man hear the word, but he just, just object to it right out. Right out. I don't want to hear it. You hear people say, oh, don't come in with that. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. They don't even want to hear the word of God. And, and they do not believe, you know, to say, well, they're not worried about their soul. They'll say, well, I, I'm doing as good as anybody else. Them old folks down there in that church, they ain't right. But you don't worry about them old folks down there. You worry about you. But so many people say that I, I would go, but so and so get on my nerve and all that stuff. No, no. So and so, you don't have to answer to them on that day. But so many times people say, I used to go to church. I don't go no more because all the more hypocrites out there, all the more folks out there, you are not responsible for them folks and them hypocrites. And this is the way this man, he just, he just, uh uh-uh. uh. He just rejected right off. No, this is the man that was uh, the seeds that were planted among the thorns and the thistle. The thorns grew and choked him. So they saying that, uh, I, 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 no, I, I reject him. We talked to him about salvation. No. They said, well, look, I see too many people get up in church and shout and do all this and come out and live worse than I do. That's not your problem. That's not your problem. And, and it said the person that does not believe in salvation of the Lord and the word of God has no purpose in his life. But this person, he said, they're, they're represented by a, a man uh, <clears throat> concerned with, with what, they're, what he's got. He's got, he's, he's come along in this world, he's done well, and looks like he's living a good life. So he feels like he has no need for Jesus. He has no need for God. His health is good. Everything's going on good. He don't feel like he has any any need for him. But he hadn't had it. And see, they're so worried about the cares of this world. I, and most many of them got their own little soul. They're concerned about my family, my family, whatever affects my family. You know, never mind your family or anybody else in the world. It's just all about me. And there's some people have a world like they live in their own world. They don't care about anybody else. They don't care about how you fare or whatever. It's just me, my, me and mine. And so some people like they got a small world, but but it's their own world. They don't try to venture out and help someone else. And you know, you can help a person, you can be, you can show evangelism, and you don't have to get out and preach to a person. Sometimes it's the way that you treat people. You see a person having a hard time, you help them. You see someone in need, you go and help them. So it's not always holding the Bible and, and, and pointing out things they need to do. No, no they're watching you. They're because you done said that you were this, that, and the other. They're watching you. And they may never read the Bible. Some people say, I don't read the Bible because I don't understand it. And maybe they don't. Somebody has got to show them. But as they go along, and the Bible says this, that, and the other, and this is what I've read to you, then you're watching me to see if I'm following what I told you. And sooner or later, if you're not for real, it's going to show up anyway. You just can't go on forever fooling people. It would definitely show up. So these people, they don't want to give up anything. They're saying, you know, they, they're so focused on the cares of this world, the fine house, fine cars, and money in the bank, all that kind of stuff. They're doing so well, they don't feel like they need God. And they kind of like the rich young ruler when he asked God what did he need to do. When he found out, when God tested him, was telling him he needed to give up some of his goods and stuff. Uh uh-uh, uh, he ain't ready to do that. So he so said he went away sorrowful. And, and so um, the, 
the man, this this man that is so focused on his wealth, and he's blinded by the attraction, and he's choked and suffocated from receiving or doing the work of God. Can't do the work of God because his mind is on his stuff. And then Jesus talked about that last group. He reached his high point when he see, he talked about the man represented by the good seed, the seed that fell on good ground. Now, you know, we are sowers of God's word. We are the soul. God's word is the seed. And we have the responsibility to sow this seed. Some will receive it and some won't. We are not responsible for the results. This is really about the condition of the heart. And you see, when we when we sow seeds, and sometimes, and I'm sure with, with ministers, they probably figure I preach my heart out and everybody just sit there, whatever. Well, you did what you was called to do. You're not responsible for the results. But you do what you do and you be you be for real and leave it is up to God. Sometimes down the road someone may say something you said really touched them and you have forgotten all about it because you didn't even realize that anybody was listening. But sometimes they say, you know you said that last year or something or maybe the first of the year or whatever. I really thought about it and I went home and I read about it and I read about it. But um, you've already forgotten about it. You don't remember when you did it. But sometimes it don't sit, it don't sink in like this. Sometimes it does. But the thing about it is, once you do what God requires you, even when the soil is that rocky soil, when it's that bad soil, you still got to sow into it because that's what God said for you to do. And you're not responsible for the condition of the soil because the lesson here, the soil represents the condition of the heart. And you're not, uh, you're not responsible. You get up here, and if you got up here and you preach and nobody said amen or nobody said anything, go ahead on and preach just like you would if you have a house full of people saying, preach, preach, you know? That's what God wants you to do. At all times. He tells us there are going to be times when we're not going to be appreciated. He knows about rejection. I mean, he couldn't even do no, he couldn't be successful in his own time. He knows about rejection. And he knows what we going to, what's going to happen to us. But he's telling us, I know that. You go ahead on. You do what I told you. And, and look at Paul. Paul was so, I mean, he was good. Here he was in jail, in chain, bound, and he's writing to this church and everything. He's telling them what to do, how to keep going. And I, I can imagine, I don't know about you, but I think if I was bound in jail and in chain, I don't think I'd be right now to Jaffa trying to get them straightened out. No. <laughs> I, the only thing I would do would probably ask them to take up some money for my bond or whatever I need to do to get out. And see if uh, Dick and Knight knows it has any more friends in the sheriff's department. So, <laughs> so you said, Dick and May, you said, Dick and Dave, uh, Ray May, you said that y'all wouldn't get out. Uh, Dick and Knight, I haven't been here. What I'm saying, under all these circumstances, here Paul. And Paul is concerned about the, his fellow Christian. And like I said, I, I love my church. I love my fellow Christian. But if I was bound in jail and chain, I would be writing y'all, telling y'all, now make sure you do this and do this. And that. No, uh-uh. All I be thinking about is getting out. Getting out. So the Lord knows that we're going to go through some stuff. He tells us that, you know, if we're going to share in his joy, we're going to share in his trouble. And he knows the things that we'll go through. So he, he, he told us many of the afflictions of the righteous. But he delivered us out of all. So we're going to have them. He's already told them we're going to have them. So when they come upon you, don't think that something really bad has happened to you. And he also said he'll be with us right through the valley and right through whatever we're going through. He's going to be with us. 
So he told us, now you sow these seeds, and here's how they're going to be. Some going to fall this way, some going to fall on the path, on the road, or whatever. The birds going to have them a good uh, lunch and dinner. Then he'll say, he talked about the one on the, 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 thorn, on the thorns, and, and then he talks about the ones, all the other ones. And we had, he had four different ones. And so, and the last one was the one that fell on good ground. But we won't always be sowing in good soil. We're going to sow in whatever soil is out there. We're going to sow when the Lord tells us to sow. So therefore, you don't, you can't worry about it. And, and and I know it's always good for somebody sometimes people to tell you that, oh, well, you're doing a good job. But don't worry about it. If they don't ever tell you you've done a good job, you just keep on doing Because that's why your job is to do the job. If, if nobody gives you accolades, don't worry about it. Who cares? Because the thing about it is, you're working for that day when God is going to give you. He's going to give you that final review, that test that you've been, been studying for, working on. He's going he's gonna to do that. And, and, and what we do... He says sometimes, you know, as I said before, if this word, if the word, which is represented by the seed, is sown among people of good will, which is good soil, the results would be like a development of disciples who would advance the kingdom of God on earth. Jesus declared that the seeds that fell on good ground are those who heard the Word of God with with a good heart and keep it and bear fruit with patience. You see, just like some of the people, like the, the ones that that had the joy, all excited and everything, they were ready to run. They want to hit the full running. Like I said, and sometimes they didn't come back for their even for the baptism or the right hand of fellowship. And you see, sometimes. People are on rocky ground, and and, and they they paint a good picture sometimes, but they're not solid inside. And if you don't, if you're not on solid ground, when adversity and all of these persecution come up against you, you're not gonna be able to stand it. You're gonna fall under this situation because you're not strong enough to do it. You don't have that spiritual support system, and if you don't have that. You're going to fall by the wayside. And some people, you know, after that, sometimes they never come back to church or whatever. And they say, well, I used to go, but I, I'm go, I'm coming, I'm coming. But I just don't go. I don't go no more. So what I'm saying is that, is that God, God expects us to be his, he expects us to be his agent. We're his FBI agent. So we're his agents, and he tells us, now nah, I know the road going to be rough, but you're going to have to go. You're going to have to travel on. And you take this in mind. When it gets rough, you say, don't worry about it. Just look up to me. But see, you got to already have that connection with it. Because you can't wait until you get in trouble and try to connect with it. I mean, God's going to hear you for you. God will look out for you. But all I'm saying is that. If you get that connection and you get it a solid, get it solid. And then when time trouble comes, you won't fall apart. You'll say, well, you know, I don't like where I am. And say, but the thing about it is, God is in here with me. God said, you'll never leave me, not forsake me. And I got my line open. I done dialed my 800 number. So, you know, I know I'm on line. So he said he'll not leave me and he won't forsake me. So I'm just going to keep going on because if I'm him, if I'm with him, he's my guy and, and I'm his child. He's going to see that I get through. But now how I'm going to get through, you know, there will be some hard times, some sickness, some death, some everything that you don't might have to put up with. But, but you're going to make it because he said you would. And if he's with you, you ain't got nothing to worry about. And so, uh, um, it says that, you know, today's the true Christian, true Christian that are helped by the Spirit of God, will show growth as other true disciples that are 
planted among them. And see, we as disciples, there's some more of disciples, believers planted in among us in this church. There are some more going to grow up, and, and they're going to be the ones that look out for this church when our time is coming. So we need to make sure we have a good example for them to follow. Show them how, what it's like to work together. Show them what it's like to be on one accord, to to learn to get along with people that you don't particularly like. You know, you, you do it. God says, so you don't like them? So well, there was a time when you didn't like me. He said, but why were you sinners? I died for all of you. So I died for you, but you, you don't even want to speak to your neighbor. So sometimes... He's telling us to get it together. And he tells us every day, when you look at the signs and all of that, the signs are telling us time is winding up. It won't be long. Most of us ain't got no family hardly left, just us and maybe one more or whatever. You know, it, it's going. And one day our, our time's going to come. And, and um, he wants us to take what we got today and plant this seed. Now, um, he wants to plant the seed. It's up to him. He didn't tell us to pick the soil or anything. He said, plant the seed. Because if, if someone comes into the church today, whatever pastor's preaching about, um, that's what they get. Well, he's going to preach the word. That's going to be up to them. It's going to be up to them. It's not going to be, he's not responsible for how it goes out, how it receives. No, he's not responsible for that, but I'm saying that he's responsible for the word. And he's responsible for the word and preach the word of God and let the Lord determine who he needs to be, who needs to be touched by that word. Because sometimes uh, people are touched by something, like I said, sometimes they're touched by your sermons or whatever, your, your praise, your worship, whatever, and you didn't even know it. But he's telling us, he tells us, he says, um, many of the affliction of the righteous. So we're going to have some trial. We're going to have a whole heap of trial. But he said, many of them. But the Lord delivered them out of the all. So I already know I'm going to have some, some, you know, some problem. I already know that. If I did it before, I know it now. <laughs> I mean, some, sometimes, some whole weeks, it's like trouble on every hand. And if it's, if it's not two or three doctors appointment, it's something else come up. Take the car or something, just something all the time. And, and, you know, as soon as you think you got this straight, something else will come up. And it's like one thing just waiting. They remind you of plane on the runway. One is waiting for the other to take off so it can land. <laughs> so this is the way it seems sometimes. Trouble on every hand. But after a while, God get us out of that dark period. And we, we explain back up again. But as long as we are here, it's going to be like that. And, and it's obvious now as you look around. It, it's it's going to be that way. Trouble on every hand. The news, you know, you don't really need to listen to the news all that much. So if you do, you'll be sick. It, it just, it's just hard. It is very hard now. And for the believers in Christ, it is extra hard. But... We know this is temporary. This is temporary. And we know this is going to be over with one day. And when it's over with, we want to make sure, and that song said, we want to be sure and very sure that, that we have made it. We got to work for God while we can. We got to sow these seeds. We are the sowers. We got to sow the seeds. So, you know, it's a good thing for us. Let us examine ourselves, and, and we'll find out. Today. Now, what kind of seeds am I sowing? Uh, what kind of soil am I, <laughs> am I planting these seeds in? But however it is, you can't worry about it. If you do what you need to do, God is in charge of all of us. I don't know who holds tomorrow. I don't know what tomorrow brings, but I sure know who holds tomorrow. And that's good enough for me because I guess some things are a good thing I don't know what tomorrow brings. Do I just sit there and worry about that today? And still living for today, I worry about, I spend the whole time worrying about what I'm gonna, how I'm going to have tomorrow. So 
So since I don't know what tomorrow I'm going to bring, that, that's just good. That's good. So it, we, we just examine ourselves and just make sure we are ambassadors for God. We're his agent. He's expecting us to go out and preach the word, teach the word, or lift up his name. And, and he's looking for us for one thing. He's looking at, at the heart. He's looking for us to be real. You can do a pretty out with a thing, you know. So many people do. They just so, uh, some of them, they speak, they're so, speak like they're so intelligent. And they probably are. And uh, I would never be able to speak the way I know some people speak. But it's all right. I don't need to. I just need to speak, just be plain to myself. I don't need to speak like some folks. Sometimes it ain't necessary for that. Let's just let's just be plain, simple, like we did when we grew up. Now that we all got a Bible, we read it, and, and some may see it this way, and some see it something that way. But the thing about it is, we we have our own Bible. We can read them any time, and and, uh, and we don't need to try to know so much. Just know something, and know you know some things, some key things, like like John three sixteen, and a few other ones. Know those, and, and then sometimes when you are someplace that you can't, you can't, someplace you can't have anybody. And if you're someplace where you, it's inconvenient, you don't have, you can't go out to the car and get your Bible. So you already got the word hid down in your heart. You got that word hid in your heart, and you know it. So you can sit right there. They say you can't pray in here. You can't read the Bible here. You're sitting right there. Your mouth is closed. They don't see you moving. They don't hear you talking. But you're praying. You're saying what you need to say. And they can't do nothing about it. So these are the things that God wants us to do. But he wants us to be stable so we can be good, so we can sow seeds. But we got to get make sure our soul is all right. We got to make sure what's coming out of here, you know, is the right thing. Then you sow good seeds. You sow some good seeds, and that way, then you leave it to him. And, and he's going he's gonna to fix the hearts. He, he's going to fix all of that. So as we, as we look around and see, you see the situation. We said, Lord, what can I do? What can I do? Well, the first thing we can do is to make sure we know the word of God ourselves. And make sure we can, we're living the life that we preach about. The life that we sing about, the life we teach about, make sure we're living that life. And then we can be ambassadors and we can be great souls. We can sow seeds. We sow seeds like the farmer. And if we're, you know, it's some going, some going to see you and some going, not going to see you. Some going to say, mm -mm, I don't want to hear that. You know, I don't want to hear that. But God wants us to, first of all, he wants to learn about it and, and learn how to share the gospel with people. Don't just bombard them and say, you did, you know, you need to do this, you need to do that. No, you don't do things like that. You, you ask God, how should you approach them and all that? You share the gospel with them. You don't push it on, you just share it with them. And sometimes when people realize that you're not trying to talk down to them, they'll warm up. And they be a lot more receptive. But some some church folks, they talk down to people. And you need to be careful. Don't talk down to anybody. Nobody, you're not going to get anything done if you're talking down to a person. Talk to the person. Not, not you know, don't talk down to them. Just talk across to them. And so, you know, everybody can be on one accord. And, and, and you know, and we can you can have conversation. In the Bible study and everything, you can have conversation. People have something to discuss because they heard, you know, they understood what you said. And and if you're going to say, try to talk down to them and try to impress them, then you're not going to get anywhere. It just ain't going to work. So when you when you talk, it's just like we are talk. We should be talking to each other. That's how comfortable we should be with sharing the gospel. And and God wants us to be good souls, get our stuff right, and then be a good soul, and then sow good seeds. 
you sold it to you. See, the farmer and, and it's in our story today, it was the, the soil was all right. The seeds was fine. They said all the seeds were the same. None of them was was uh, you know, bad seeds or nothing. But it was the ground, the soil that they were sown in, that's where the problem came in. And but the farmer that was not responsible for it, he just sowed the seed. And we won't be responsible. We just gonna sow our seed. And like it says, and remember one thing, every saved person is a missionary. Every unsaved person is a mission field. Are there any comments? <laughs> Watching us too now. We just saw. We want us to. We need to be right too. 
There's some things that all of us got some stuff with us, with the truth we know. Every one of us. And so we got some stuff we need to get straight. Once we get ourselves straight, then we're able to so good see. But, you know, you gotta you gotta be for, for real yourself. You gotta you gotta live the life that you sing about, pray about, preach about, and teach about. There you go. There you go. And the same person is a missionary, and every other saved person is a mission for you. So there's work to be done. Are there any other comments? Yes, good morning. Um, as I always say, when we're true to our sales, let me, I'm on two different phones. Sorry about that. When we are true to our sales, we'll be true to others. So, um, I enjoyed the message. I'll come be there with two friends this morning. So, continue on. Thank you. Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, the 16th day of July in the year of our Lord 2023. School was called to order by Deacon Ray May at 1001. Mother Lord, um, and the opening hymn, um, Worthy to be Praised. Prayer by Deacon J. May. Scripture for today came from Matthew 13, 1 through 9, 18 through 23. The subject of the lesson, Growing Strong. The main thought, Matthew 13, 23. Teachers present, grand total attendance is 25. Total offering was $41.75. The lesson was reviewed for 38 minutes by Chelsea Willie. Closing remarks were made to the school by, for the youth, um, Trustee Williams, and for the adults, Mother Dupree. All the officers remain the same. <laughs> Ah, uh, 